Hello everyone, welcome to Golden Top 10, a channel for amazing facts and information. In this video, we are going to talk about the top 10 freedom fighters in Africa. Watch this video till the end so you don't miss any part of the video worth seeing, and make sure to subscribe to Golden Top 10, and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our future uploads. Some critics believe that many African liberation fighters were denied historical recognition as part of a deliberate effort to push the pan-African struggle to the margins. Whether or not this is accurate, it is impossible to dispute that many people contributed in some way great or small, to the abolition of slavery, colonialism, and apartheid. Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere, Patrice Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, Oliver Tombo, Nelson Mandela, and other major African historical personalities will continue to echo in history, and deservedly so. However, we must acknowledge that there are a few individuals who made significant sacrifices for African independence and have been mostly forgotten by history. Here are the top 10 freedom fighters in Africa. Number 10. Sharif Mumin Asai. He is a Burkinabe politician of Mauritanian descent who served as the interim head of parliament from 2014 to 2015. While his involvement in Parliament in 2014 is remembered in history, it is his reputation as a courageous journalist and a champion of media freedom in Africa that has earned him a place in our ranking. When Burkina Faso was in trouble, renowned author Nick Cowley reports that Sharif Mumin Asai led his country against a military coup with his excellent leadership capabilities. Some critics argue that the majority of records on Mumin Asai are in colloquial French and have not been translated, which is one of the reasons why he is not a well-known name in Anglophone Africa or Western history. Mumin Asai is the founder of the Pan-African Festival of Freedom of Expression and Press Freedom, which is celebrated yearly in Burkina Faso. Number 9. Victoria Mxenge. Victoria joined Griffiths Mxenge's legal business when her anti-apartheid activist husband, Griffiths Mxenge, died. She was a member of the defense team in the 1984 treason trial of leaders of the UDF and the Natal Indian Congress in the Peter Maritzburg Supreme Court, where she intervened in cases of young people being tortured in jails. According to South African History Online, MXNG established a bursary fund in memory of her spouse. She joined the Nelson Mandela Release Committee, the National Organization of Women, and the United Democratic Front's Natal Treasurer. She was assassinated and murdered at her Durban house in 1985. She was 43 years old at the time. Number 8. Dorothy Adams. Dorothy Adams was born in Wellington, some 70 kilometers outside of Cape Town, in 1928. Her mother was a cook and her father worked at a factory. Both were active members of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and religion was an important part of Adams' upbringing. When she was 17, she completed the basic training to become a teacher. Adams was disillusioned with the church, according to South African History Online, since the apartheid government imposed the Group Areas Act through the church. She believed the church had a responsibility to do more to combat segregation. Adams joined the Teachers League of South Africa, TLSA, the Non-European Unity Movement, and the National Liberation Front as a young man. Number 7. Funmalai O Ransom Kuti. Kuti was a pivotal figure in Nigeria's fight against British colonization. She founded the Abiyokuta Women's Union, which was vital in the fight against colonial taxation. Kuti battled diligently as an activist for women's political representation and for the empowerment of society's most oppressed groups. Despite her contributions to Nigeria's independence and women's emancipation, she is not considered a national hero. She is also the mother of Fela Kuti, the Pan-African music hero who used his satirical lyrics to expose the military dictators and foreign superpowers who exploited his home country, Nigeria, and Africa in general through his music. Number 6. Mariama Ba. Mariama Ba is a Senegalese political activist and writer. In her writings, she criticized Senegalese society's treatment of women, as well as violence against women, a lack of opportunity for women, and polygamy. She began to oppose what she saw as disparities between the sexes coming from African traditions from a young age. She became an outspoken supporter of reforming laws and institutions that oppress women. Ba was a wife and mother who married a Senegalese politician and had nine children with him. Despite the fact that the marriage ended in divorce, it inspired her first novel, So Long a Letter, which is known for its remarkable representation of women in Islamic society and its scathing condemnation of polygamy. 
Number 5. Ya Asantua. Joan of Arc has been named the African Joan of Arc. She was a politician, a war planner, and a political activist all rolled into one. In 1900, when the Ashanti nation spirits were down, she organized a rebellion against the British to safeguard the golden stool, the nation's symbol. British forces eventually put down the uprising, forcing her into exile in Seychelles, but she became a symbol of daring and resilience in the face of persecution. Ya Asantua was the queen mother of Ajisu in the Ashanti Empire, which is now part of modern-day Ghana. Her brother Nana Akwasi Afrain Apeza, the Edwesuane, or monarch, of Edwesu, appointed her. Number 4. Ahmed Sekou Touré. He was the Republic of Guinea's first president. He is respected throughout French West. In Africa's post-colonial history, he was recognized as a charismatic and radical politician who led his country to independence from France. Under demand to grant independence to French colonies. French President Charles de Gaulle's held a constitutional referendum in 1958. African colonies have the option of either approving the constitution and receiving gradual independence or declaring independence immediately. Guinea is the only country that has refused to accept the constitution and has called for independence. It is better to be poor and free than to live in affluence and be a slave, Touré declared in a memorable speech. Number 3. Jacina Muthemba Mashal. Muthemba was a pivotal role in Mozambique's independence movement. She was born into a well-known nationalist family and joined the war at an early age, first as a member of clandestine student groups before joining the Mozambique Liberation Front in 1960. She was the main force behind the women's detachment movement, now known as the Organization of Mozambican Women, a group of women who took up arms to fight for their country's liberation, and she married Samora Mashal, Mozambique's first president, in 1969, when she was 24 years old. Number 2. Peter Abrahams. Peter Abrahams was born in 1919 in Vredadorp, Johannesburg, to an Ethiopian father and a colored mother. His mixed-race background inspired his writing throughout his life. He was an ardent reader as a youth, which led him to pursue a career as a novelist, and he frequently wrote on race in South Africa, speaking out against apartheid. He lived in France, the United Kingdom, and Jamaica as an adult, which exposed the country's abysmal race relations even more, and he considered South Africa was far behind these other countries in terms of racial integration and acceptance. Critics feel that Peter Abraham's paintings, which accurately depicted the South African struggle against apartheid, contributed to the documentation of history for future generations. Number 1. James Iwasi Mensah. Ray Karina's 2007 documentary and article about James Iwasi Mensah, Ghana's unsung freedom hero, is possibly the most revealing chronicle of Iwasi life Mensah's, who doesn't even have a Wikipedia page to his name. The history of American racism in the Gold Coast during World War II cannot be understood, however, without remembering James Iwasi Mensa, who was slain by American Air Force Major Russell McCormick. The Americans established their base at the Accra Airport in 1941, and by July 1942, the U.S. Army's Air Transport Command had relocated from Cairo to Accra, where it established its Africa Middle East Wing. During this time, Iwasi Mensah, who worked as a clerk in the transportation office at the age of 22, is thought to have made many decisions that aided in the independence of Ghana. That was it for this video. What do you think about our video? Tell us in the comments below. As always, please don't forget to subscribe to Golden Top 10, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.